Hey guys, and welcome back to part six of the CNC build videos, where I'm gonna show you how I built a blast gate and ran a new dust collection line over for the CNC. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get a four inch PVC pipe, which I use all over for my dust collection. And I'm gonna heat up one end of it as I need this end to butt up nicely against the router and get as close as possible. So I'm gonna heat it up and then flatten it with a block of wood on top and a block on bottom just to keep it kind of straight because you can see as I push down without the piece in the middle it actually wants to buckle in on itself so clamping these two pieces together is really going to give me a nice flat surface. The collar on the router sticks down about an inch lower than the mounting bracket for the router so the PVC pipe is one inch longer and I'm going to bring it over to the bandsaw and chop off the one side closest to the router as to increase airflow on that side. This PVC pipe is going to have the hose going in the top and the opening on the bottom to suck. So in order to mount this PVC pipe to the Z-axis which slides up and down, on the top I'm going to be attaching a piece of wood with a couple screws to the PVC pipe directly. On the bottom I'm simply going to go in from an angle, drive a screw through the PVC pipe into the Z-axis. The next step is to modify the pipe going over to my miter saw station. I'm going to insert a Y fitting here and branch off over on top of the CNC. I simply cut in, cut away as much as I need to, and then install the Y fitting with some PVC cement. I get a lot of questions and concerns about using PVC cement, but for me it's not really a big deal because if I ever need to change anything I'll just cut it apart, add a coupler, and re-cement it again. The PVC pipe will elbow down towards the CNC table, somewhere around the middle of the table. Now I'm going to be running a 4 inch flex hose down from that directly into the pipe. Now you can see I didn't quite have a long enough hose, but a coupler in the middle works just fine with some tape. And a little trial run shows just how much suction this thing is going to be capable of. Now that the dust collection is complete, I need to add a blast gate to turn it on and off. So I cut two 7 inch square pieces of 5 8 melamine, and then I'm going to cut up some hardboard strips. This is 8 inch hardboard, and it's going to be used as the spacer and the slider mechanism, as well as some little handles. If you're looking for exact dimensions, you can go to DIYbuilds.ca and look up my dust collector video. You can also watch my dust collector video building several of these all in different kinds of configurations. The first step is to use three staples on both sides to attach the guides and using the slider as a spacer in between. Then I'll take the top piece, put it on top, and drill four holes in each corner, being sure to look out for the staples and to make sure I'm drilling through the guide. Then I'm going to mark out the location of the hole, drill a pilot hole, and bring it over to the scroll saw and cut it out to final size. Now I test the fit and it looks good. So I can put the slider in, put one of the handles on for correct spacing, drop the PVC back in place, and mark the inside of the pipe. This is going to be the size of the hole for the sliding mechanism. Now that the hole is cut in the sliding mechanism, it's time to glue on the handles onto both sides. This just requires a little bit of glue and some light clamping. Once the glue is dry, I take off the clamps and test the function of it. Now if you were smart, you would have installed the blast gate beforehand. 
I'm not, so we're gonna have to retrofit it here. So I cut the pipe in half, put my two pieces on, and using a Sharpie, I'm gonna mark the pipe and the blast gate on both sides to make sure that it lines up correctly with the four holes when I'm done attaching the pipe to either side of the blast gate. Both sides of the blast gate are attached with four screws through the PVC into the melamine. Before reassembling the blast gate, I make sure to put the slider back in place, drive the four screws, and then it's time to add some silicone around the edges. I then cut up a small scrap of wood, which is going to be used to trigger against the limit switch, which we'll install next. Two small screws are then installed to keep the limit switch in place. The wiring is then done off camera to connect the switch up with the rest of the circuit. 